Hey guys, Andy Tran here with the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I try and do weekly videos on the outdoor survival do-it-yourself and reviews. And in this video, I wanted to go over the Oru Kayak Inlet Kayak. This is one of those origami folding kayaks. What's different about this than your typical, you know, sort of portable kayak is that it is not an inflatable. So they have a few different kayaks already on the market but this is the first one that is under a thousand bucks. You know, if you're really getting into the paddle sports, that's when you start seeing boats that are easily upwards of $1,500. So if you live in an apartment like I used to, or you just have a lot of hobbies and you have a lot of space taken up by other things, this might be a really good option for you to have something that you can paddle around. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put it together. I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do it because there's tons of videos out there from the actual company on how to do that, but I will let you know my thoughts and how it handles. This kayak has a total weight of 20 pounds and has a payload of 275 pounds. Assembled, this kayak is 10 feet bow to stern. In its fold configuration, this measures 40 inches by 19 inches by 10 inches. The main body is made out of UV protected polypropylene. And from the factory, it is rated to be folded 20,000 times. This kayak folds and carries like a large suitcase with two buckles to keep it closed. The bulkheads are set in place and the bow and stern are strapped together. The bow and stern both have a nylon cover to keep water out. The bulkheads are held in place with brackets and a small strip of Velcro. Next, the gunnels are fastened together using a quick release buckle. The strap has a little stop on it to make sure that you have proper tension. The seat bottom is held in place with an elastic cord. The seat back is clipped into place using a bracket, and the back is supported by clipping into the gunnels. The foot brace ties in much the same way. The inlet kayak is made for relatively calm water. If you're seeing white caps, it's probably not the best time to have this thing out. However, I did find that the kayak is quick and nimble and tracks straight. Since the boat is pretty short and very, very lightweight, it did deviate from straight if you paddled hard. The main downside to a kayak like this with an open cockpit is that water more easily gets onto the inside from wind, waves, or from the paddle itself. The trade-off though is that it's easy to get in and out and you can also take dogs in there with you. My brother-in-law is quite a bit larger than I am and he said the cockpit felt roomy and the boat was easy to maneuver around the subsurface rocks. I attempted to get a lot of good GoPro footage, but I lost the camera because the mount came loose. While helping me look for the camera, my wife stated that the boat was very stable while she was kneeling. And while I didn't try bow fishing with this boat, I would imagine that I could probably stand on relatively calm water and take some shots. So that is my review of the Oru Kayak Inlet. This thing is pretty cool. At 20 pounds, it's extremely lightweight, so it's easy to carry. So say you wanted to go to an alpine lake, you could probably fashion some straps for this thing, carry it up, it's only 20 pounds, and you can probably get a thousand feet of elevation without too much trouble. With it being 20 pounds, it's surprisingly stable. Because it's a little bit wider, it's not one of those long, narrow touring kayaks. I did ground it a couple times on some low rocks, but um, overall the, the durability is good. And this thing is surprisingly fast. Uh, because you're not propelling a whole bunch of mass, 
like a normal kayak of the size, you have a lot more speed for the amount of energy that you're putting in. So overall, I really like this thing. It's fast, it's nimble. Some things that I would change is that uh, I would change the color of the buckles that actually fasten things together. So like this one over here, it has some color stitching, but it's not really obvious that this is something that you need to put together. Um, so some, something like an orange buckle or something like that would be helpful. Um, and then also, you know, one of these buckles that holds the whole thing together when it's in the folded position. It'd be kind of nice if they incorporated like a whistle or something like that, because in some states it's kind of a, it's a regulatory thing to have some sort of signaling device on the kayak. So it'd be nice to have that already implemented in its design. But overall, this thing is pretty cool. Um, again, it's, it's under a thousand bucks. And if you guys are into the paddle sports, you know that a lot of these, uh, these higher end recreational or professional kayaks, they go from about 1500 and up. So if you're in an apartment or you have a garage that's filled with a whole bunch of stuff like mine, cause I got a lot of hobbies, then this is definitely something to look into. If you guys enjoy the video, please like, share and subscribe and also check out my Facebook page, Instagram and other social media. It really helps me know that these are the kind of videos you want to see. But as always, take care out there. Bye.